And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage, Mr. Jack Benny, in Elliot Lewis's production of Murder in G-Flat, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. The, the next morning, that was this morning, Sunday, uh, Martha wouldn't speak to me at all. Her eyes were all red and puffed up. I could see that she'd been crying. And Uncle Herman wasn't doing much talking either. Martha just kept sniffling as she puttered around the stove. <laughs> Martha, my peach isn't peeled. Peel it yourself. But I... Uh, here, I'll peel it for you, nephew. Thanks, Uncle Herman. Martha, please, won't don't you, you try... Don't you talk to me. Oh, no, don't be too hard on him, Martha. After all, a man's got a right... I told you once, Uncle Herman, you stay out of this. It's none of your business. Sorry. She's plenty mad. Well, ain't you going to answer the phone? Hello? Uh, Mr. Remington? Yes? Hercules Remington? Yes, who is this, please? I, uh, I want to return your bag of piano duels to you, Mr. Remington. I... I believe I... there was a slight mix-up. I believe in my haste I picked up your bag instead. But... But how did you find me? I mean... Oh, it was quite simple. There's only one piano tuner with the initials HR in New York City. <laughs> well... Well, what do you know? You do want your piano tools back, don't you, Mr. Remington? Uh, listen to me. I... I don't think you'd like the idea of not being able to tune any more pianos. What? And I'd like to have my bag returned. Of course. As soon as possible. Yes. Tonight. Uh... Tonight? At 9.30 tonight. Meet me at Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden? At 9.30 at the 49th Street entrance. The door on the far end will be left slightly open. And uh, please be prompt, Mr. Remington, with my brown bag. <laughs> you see, it will displease my business uh, partner considerably if he finds I've lost the bag. No, all right. The, the 49th Street entrance, the door on the far end. Hercules, what's wrong? Well, you're as white as a ghost. I am? You sure are. I guess I should be. That was the little bald-headed man with horn-rimmed glasses, Uncle Herman. I've just lost $25,000. Uncle Herman went in the living room to read the Sunday paper, and I went in the bedroom to tell Martha about the phone call. But she wasn't there. In fact, she wasn't anywhere in the house. She was gone, and I figured that she'd probably gone over to her sister's house. I was so nervous the rest of the afternoon, I couldn't eat a thing. I left the house for Madison Square Garden about 9 o'clock. From riches to rags in about 24 hours. And I was back riding the subway. I walked up 8th Avenue to the garden. I turned and walked up 49th Street to the entrance and stopped. Sure enough, one of the doors on the far end was open a little, just as the little man had told me it would be. I slipped in through the open door. It was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. Hello? Hello? Anybody here? Hello? Is, is there anyone here? What the... I stumbled over something and almost fell. I struck a match and, and looked down at a body. The body of the little man in horn-rimmed glasses. His head was all covered with blood. I started to blow out the match, and then something caught my eye. Lying next to his body was my brown bag with the initials H.R. And next to the bag, covered with blood was my tuning hammer. 
Lieutenant, may I call my wife? I want to... Finish your story first, Mr. Remington. You can call her after that. Oh. Oh, all right. Now, you were standing over the body of this man in Madison Square Garden. You found your tuning hammer next to the body. Yes. Yes, my tuning hammer. Let me tell you, Lieutenant. I was scared. Plenty scared. There I was, standing over a dead man in Madison Square Garden. And clutched in my hand was his brown bag containing $25,000. Who would kill me? Who would... But I couldn't stop to think about that now. I had to get out of there and fast. And take my bag and hammer lying on the floor with me. I started to reach for my bag when... A sound, G-flat. Someone had opened up a knife. Whoever it was coming toward me... I blew out the match and waited. Who was in that corridor with me? Was it the business partner of the little man? Was it... I started to move backwards and then a big black figure loomed up at me. With all my strength, I brought the brown bag swinging up from the floor. I ran until I thought my legs were gone. My mind was all fogged up now. I couldn't think straight. Who was the guy who just tried to kill me? One thing I knew for sure, I had to get rid of this money until I could think things out. But where? Where could I get rid of it? I neared the corner of 59th and 8th Avenue and and then saw a bus terminal. Why not? A public locker in in the bus station. I opened the door and walked in. Philadelphia, leaving in 10 minutes. Yes, ma'am, in about 20 minutes. Excuse me, mister. I'd like to have a key for a locker. Now, just a second. G sharp. What you say? Hmm? Oh. Oh, nothing. Uh, what do you know? I haven't got an empty one right now. I have to wait a little while. You mean out of all of these hundreds of lockers, you, you haven't got one empty? Well, I'm sorry, mister, but you can see for yourself. A lot of servicemen in town over the weekend. Well, how long will it be? 10, 15 minutes. Maybe a couple hours. Okay, I'll I'll wait. I'll sit over there. I bought a paper at the newsstand and sat down on one of the benches. I didn't even know what I was reading. I just kept... And then I saw it. On page two. A complete account of a robbery that had occurred on Friday night at one of the downtown post offices. Two bandits had escaped with $25,000 in $10 bills. This was it. It must have been. But would the police believe a story like that? Of course they wouldn't. I had the money, and it was my tuning hammer there, lying next to the body in the garden. I got out of that bus tournament in a hurry and walked up 8th Avenue. Where could I go? The only place I could think of was Coney Island. Coney Island and Uncle Herman and his pitch penny concession. It was late, and the, the island amusement park was almost deserted. It was cold and close to 11. Uncle Herman was leaning against the side of his concession as I walked up. Why, nephew, what, uh, what are you doing out this way? Uncle Herman, quick, let's go in back. All right. There ain't no customers anyway. Yeah. Now, what happened, Hercules? Did you give the money back to the man? I, I went to meet him at the garden, just like he told me. But when I got there and I found him, he was dead. Dead? He'd been beat over the head with my tuning hammer. Why, Hercules. I was just about to grab my hammer and bag and get out of there when someone made a lunge at me in the dark. But I got away. I went to a bus terminal to put the money in a locker. I had to wait. And then I read that the money is stolen post office money. Oh, you got yourself in a mess, nephew. I'm frantic. I don't know what to do. That's why I came here. Well, I'm glad you did, nephew. Glad you did. But what am I going to do? The uh, best thing would be to go back and get that hammer and bag. Leave the money here. I'll hide it for you. But maybe I ought to go to the police. You can't go to the police with that story. They'd never believe you, Hercules. I know. Now, I bring know. your bag and come with me, nephew. I got a hiding place for that money that no one will ever find. Uncle Herman locked his place up and then he led me over to the fun house. It was closed now and the place was all dark.